Hey everyone, so today in this video we're going to be servicing this Heldex unit. So this is on an Audi TT RS. It's pretty much the same unit that's used on the Golf R's, um, most of the VW stuff and also some other brands. So this would apply to a lot of other vehicles as well. So coming underneath here, we've got our fill bolt at the top there. Fill bolt, over here is your drain bolt, down here. And if you come along this side to the exhaust side, Come to the exhaust side over here you've got your pump over there and you have your filter over there at the top and because this one has a filter we don't really need to take out the pump especially if it has a good service record we'll just take out the filter and get that replaced and um, you don't need to really take the pump out but if you want to take it out you can but i would recommend changing those o-rings if the vehicle is more than five years old so that's what that looks like underneath we will be performing a differential service as well on this vehicle so the diff plug which you should not get confused on is over here on this side diff plug so remember the diff always sits near the axle so the diff is here so this is your drain and this is your fill over here on the diff side we'll be doing that at a later date so stay tuned for that in the meantime i'll show you what tools you require so these are the tools you require for doing the Heldex service. You'll need your Heldex kit, which will come with the filter, replacement bolts, replacement fill bolt, and a replacement drain bolt, the Heldex fluid. So you'll need an 8mm hex for the drain bolt. You'll need a 5mm for the fill bolt over here, and you need a 4mm for the filter bolts over there. Some ratchets you'll need. Uh, in addition to those tools, you'll need a light, a couple of torque wrenches, one to do the drain bolt up, and another one to do the um, lower torque fill bolt and the filter bolts up. You might need a marker if you want to mark the bolts, a couple of screwdrivers to pull out that filter, and different types of ratchets, half inch, quarter inch, the extensions. Also, it's quite important to have a set of these pliers, so have a straight nose plier, have a bent one, and have some good pliers or similar. You will need this to pull that filter out, as you see later in the video. It's quite important to have this, otherwise it's quite difficult, especially if you're not using VCDS. You might also need a 4mm Allen key, because you might not have enough space to get in there to chain that filter on a Gen 4 Haldex unit. So keep that in mind, you might also need that. Also, if you have VCDS, the Rostec cable, um, I would highly recommend it. It does make the job a bit easier. If not, it's not a big deal. Um, the main thing you want to factor in is the temperature of the fluid. So 20 to 40 degrees is the temperature of the fluid that you need to factor in according to the factory manual. But this is the alternative method. If you don't have a scan tool or VCDS or similar, what you'll need is a digital probe type thermometer. It's as simple as just basically opening up this cap, turning this on and just measuring the temperature of the fluid. I won't be putting this in there because it's not for automotive use because I've got VCDS so I don't really need to do this but this is quite handy to have even if you have, you're doing a DSG service you can use this as well. Pop that into the bottle, just the tip of it and then you measure the temperature of the fluid and if it's not warm. So that's what you do, use this one of these probes if you don't have VCDS to check the temperature of the fluid. So if you keep that in mind, um, you should get away without using this cable if you don't have one, or OBD11 or similar. And you might need some lubricant if your bolts are rusted, you might just want to spray that down a day prior before doing this job. So that's all the basic stuff we need. So get your container ready and keep it underneath the diff on the filter side. So what we want to start by doing is just ensuring that we can open the fill plug as per usual. So take your 5mm tool and just crack it open and then re-tighten it just hand tight if you've got good maintenance history in your vehicle this should be a fairly straightforward job so once that's cracked open now we'll go to the other side and open up the pump bolts so it was a bit difficult to get that 4mm hex into there with the socket so we're just using a 4mm allen key and it's basically it's just finger tight it's quite low torque so you'll get away with this so it's just one of these standard allen keys just 
so now that I've got the bolts there, I've got them loosened, we'll go ahead and take this top cap off, it'll be quite tight in there. We'll use a set of pliers or a screwdriver or something similar and we'll just open that and we'll just pop it there and then we'll activate the pump here. I broke it loose with the pliers there and just with the screwdriver just popped it out like so. So with the bolts reinstalled again, we'll go ahead now and activate VCDS and turn the pump on. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have access to VCDS, just monitor that fluid temperature but you can try and get away with um, a set of long needle nose pliers and get in there and pull that filter out we will be using this later but it just makes it a little bit harder doing it without the pump um, which pre-charges the chamber to push the filter out so let's go inside now so vcds is connected underneath there the obd2 port so if you want to know where the obd2 port is it's just at the driver's side um, underneath so where your headlight switch is just underneath there so now we'll go ahead and start up VCDS. So with VCDS running now, we'll go ahead and select the control module, go to oval drive, and we'll go to output test. Next we just hit start, then we hit activate, then we hit next again to activate the pump. And as you can see, when you see the current being drawn from the pump, then you know it's been activated. You can also monitor the fluid temperature in this window as well. In this window you can basically monitor the temperature of the Helvex coupling. As well, you can monitor the engine temperature, the ambient temperature and uh, many other parameters if you wanted to keep an eye on what the um, temperature of the other subsystems are. But you mainly want to worry about just the Helvex unit and the fluid as I showed you earlier in the video. Hopefully you saw it in the previous clip how the fluid came out of the filter housing and it basically assisted the filter in being pushed out. So it just makes our life a lot easier when it comes to time to removing the filter and the seals. So the plastic housing with the seals, it just makes it a lot easier to pull it out because we will be using the pliers and the pick tool a bit later. I also didn't run the pump for too long because I didn't want to run it dry so keep that in mind as well. So we'll let all the drain out, as you can see I just removed the fill plug and now it's draining out even faster. Just let that drain out and visit, come back to it. Again like I said we'll need to maintain that fluid temperature between 20 to 40 degrees. As you would have seen earlier in VCDS it was about 25 degrees so we're still within spec. But we'll check that again um, while filling up. And also another thing is you want to level out the car if you're on ramps or if you're jacking up. Just put the filter a little bit over there with the housing above the pump.
Once you get it that far out, then you can get a screwdriver and start prying it off. It's just because the two O-rings are in there, it's just a bit hard to get it out. There we go, so that's half the, so this is just a seal. We still need to take out the filter element. So using one of these picks, I carefully put a little bit of force on the edge of the plastic filter and pulled it, making sure not to scratch the side housing. So using a mirror you can inspect the housing, make sure there's no dirt inside. So just compare your old and new filter. It looks the same, dimensions are the same. So everything looks the same, so now we'll go ahead and just bolt everything in. The bolts on these filters are normally down between 5 to 6 Newton meters. Just check your particular vehicle and the specification on it. So when reinstalling it, make sure you lube up the new O-rings. So lube them both up. So there's one, two here, and there's one here which I've already lubed up. And then just slot that in there, and then we'll just go ahead and tighten it. Go ahead and slot the new filter in there. And take your seal, make sure it's lubricated, as I showed you earlier. And it's just reverse of removal once you've got that. It is quite difficult to push that in, but you will get there. Um, just put the bolts in and then use the top cover to pull in the rest of the filter so it's flush in the housing. So just like that, put the filter in and just compress it and it should pull it in. So once you get a steady drip coming from here, then you know it's full. As long as the fluid temperature is between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. Otherwise you will have to jack up the vehicle or take it for a drive, run it up and make um, watch the temperature of the all wheel drive farm system. Once it's within the operating spec, then you can go ahead and top it up. Awesome. Now we have the steady drip. Just want to see a little bit more for drip, so we'll just fill that a little bit more.
Yeah, so that's that's when you see the steady drip and then you just tighten it up. So like I said earlier, make sure your car is level and make sure it's between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. All the specs will be up later in the video so you can follow that. And, and that's how you fill it up. Don't forget to talk this down to the spec that will be mentioned later. Depending on your make and model, just check your torque specs for your particular vehicle. But um, this this particular um, vehicle requires 15 newton meters to torque it up. So 15 on the fill plug and 35 on the drain plug, and between five and six for the filter on the other side. So once you're all done, you can activate your pump if you want to check it, or you can just take it for a drive and then check recheck your fluid in the following day. So that's how you service a Heldex unit. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting videos and other various interesting camper and car content. See ya.